For just about all of his 98 years, Carl Reiner made people laugh. He died this past Monday. Tributes have been pouring in all week. Which brings us to this one from our Mo Rocca. First thing in the morning, before I have coffee, I read the obits. If Seriously? I'm, yes, if I'm not in it, I'll have breakfast. Even when discussing something grim. I think about how I'd like to go. What we, a show this would be if I was talking to you. <laughs> Carl Reiner, who died last week at 98, couldn't help but sound sunny. He was rare in that I can't remember him being in a bad mood or him telling me about a bad mood. Legendary TV writer and producer Norman Lear, now 97, was close friends with Reiner for more than 50 years. This may be a little hokey, but what do you think kept him going so long? The same thing that keeps me going so long. We both like getting up in the morning. <laughs> and he missed it today. He missed it today. Carl Reiner didn't miss a lot. One of television comedy's founding fathers, Reiner first came into our homes as a featured player on Your Show of Shows. If there is one thing I've learned being superintendent of this hospital for the last 16 years, it's this, that this is a hospital and not an experimental laboratory. <laughs> on Your Show of Shows, he was the second banana to Sid Caesar. <laughs> I understand that Jews is a reporter. Look, boy, we don't like reporters. What made him so good in that role? Carl had no need to be the principal in anything. Uh, a lot of comics do. And so he could be very funny as a sidekick and a straight man. The Dick Van Dyke Show. Reiner is probably best known for creating The Dick Van Dyke Show, which began airing on CBS in 1961. It starred Dick Van Dyke as the head writer of a fictional TV program. He's the head writer of The Alan Brady Show. Oh, sure. <laughs> is that still on? Reiner played the blowhard host. Hi there, remember me? Right. <laughs> a mensch, the greatest human being I ever met in my life. Unique. Irreplaceable man. For some reason, Carl had a deep understanding about human behavior and what motivated people to do what they do. At the very end of the show, I didn't handle myself too well with that Patrick rat. Oh, he, he got you to say something embarrassing, didn't he? What was it? <laughs> that Alan Brady is full. <laughs> I found myself going to his office for answers about life, about my, raising my kids, about family. And, and I learned so much from him. He kind of created me along with creating Rob Petrie. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. And because that's true, you're mine now. Did you mess up my hair? I like to. <laughs> so you think that you've got trouble? Well, trouble's a bubble. So tell them it's the trouble to get lost. Dick Van Dyke graced us with some of the little-known lyrics to the show's theme. A frown, smile is just a frown that's turned upside down. So smile on that frown or defrost. And don't forget to keep your fingers crossed for doo-doo. <laughs> Robbo. Well, that's, uh, that's not the faucet, honey. Carl understood there's no such thing as an adult. An adult is his costume and mannerism that a kid puts on in order to make it through life. There was no venue where Reiner didn't kill. On stage. On TV. In this razzle-dazzle world of television, each new season sets the networks in a spin. After many years, I have a strong suspicion 
It's a weird, 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 weird whiz we're in. As a film director. And action. I'm a jerk. And sometime actor. At my age, I think I earned the right to be selfish. Oh, and remember comedy albums? He and Mel Brooks had one of the biggest with the 2,000-year-old man, with Reiner once again playing the straight man. All right, Listen, what ready? should I do? Give me a boost, a up boost here. Yes. Double like somersault. Okay. Never leave your eyes off your face for this. <laughs> and one, and two, and wait, let's reconsider. That's 100% Carl Reiner. And that's why it, he worked so well with Mel. Because Mel will tell you himself, he needed to be up front. And Carl was a champion from the side. Carl and Mel were a match made in comedy heaven. But Reiner's lifelong co-star was his beloved wife, Estelle. I had a lot of hair in those days, black hair, black wavy. Hair. The couple reminisced about their first meeting back in 2007 with Tracy Smith. Really good looking, but, but typical. I said, tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> a, you're adorable. B, you're so Ten years beautiful. later, after Estelle had passed away, Reiner reflected. Having a good marriage and good children, a good life is what you send out to the world. I have three children, non-toxic children, all <laughs> have done great things and are continuing to do great things. And I had a marriage of 65 years. That's the only thing that defi really defines me. There's a stereotype about comics being dark. Carl Reiner was all light. A few days ago, Norman Lear's son-in-law, our own Dr. John LaPook, sent us this video clip of Carl Reiner greeting Lear at a party in 2000. It's strange to say it in this season of coronavirus, but he was a great hugger. You know, it's a gem, that little bit of photography of him hugging me. That, in a sense, is the essence of Carl also. And it sounds like he loved being with his friends. There was never a better friend. The LA Times a bit talked about pure joy, and that's what he brought to everything, pure joy.